Hi, this is Dina for Split Coast Stampers. In this video, I'll be using coffee filters to transfer watercolor powder effects to photo paper. And I want to start off by showing you how photo paper reacts when you use the powders directly, because that can be done, it's just different. I've got some repackaged brush -o powders here and I'm applying those directly to glossy photo paper. And someone's going to ask me, I have glossy cardstock, can I use that? No, glossy photo paper and glossy cardstock are not the same thing and you will not get the same effects with glossy cardstock as you're seeing in this video. So you'll see here that the powders react with water the same way they would on watercolor paper. And the cool thing here is that you can blot this and the paper has captured all of that blending and it won't lift with a paper towel. It's sort of like an instant print. The downside is that you can't reactivate it to continue filling in the panel and the results can tend to be a little spotty and you may want that. So it's not bad or wrong, it's just something to know. For a smoother blend and some cool textured effects, I'd like to use a coffee filter to transfer the watercolor powders to photo paper. And this filter is an eight to 12 cup size. It's about eight inches wide. And I smoothed it out and then I'll start sprinkling my powders onto the filter. And these are the same colors that I used before. You can see how easily the filter paper accepts the powders and allows them to bleed and blend. And you can continue adding them until you have the effect that you want. I'm going to lift the paper and lay it right over the photo paper. And the photo paper is going to capture that as a print along with the interest of all those little wrinkles and air pockets in the paper. You can use an inked coffee filter more than one time. So I'm going to take that same filter and use it again on this piece. And this is a half sheet of photo paper. So I'll be able to get two cards out of this piece. Now I have a stencil on there, and since the openings of that stencil are kind of small, the filter paper didn't lay down into the design, but you can actually take the filter and kind of squish it into the openings to get a better effect there. For this sample, I picked a couple of different colors and I ended up not using this panel on a card, but I wanted you to see again how I filled in a smaller stencil design. And also that you can use the ink that's on your craft sheet to fill in the open areas. There's really so little waste in this project. And I also wanted you to see that you can continue making prints from these filters even when they seem like they're used up. I've squeezed a lot of the water out of this filter doing the stenciling but I'm able still to sort of smooth it out and press it onto a new panel and get a really interesting print from it. And then I can continue to crumple it up and fill in the open areas like I did before. Here's that same blue filter from my first two projects and I can use that to add layers here as well. I worked a little differently on this sample I just misted the filter enough to get the powders to stick to it. And then I laid it over the photo paper and misted some more. And actually with this one, I moved the filter around several times to make a few different impressions and even out the color on the panel. Also, when you're done with your prints, don't throw the coffee filters away, let them dry and you can use them as background panels for cards. If you click over to the photo tutorial, I have a link to some good instructions for mounting the filters onto a cardstock panel. So I hope this gets your mind spinning and that you'll take some time to play with this technique. It's really a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching.